for me, the what I was doing in the summer of 63 was raising as much hell as I could and trying to focus on issues of race and, and get things upset. I mean, Washington was a very racist town in 63. And so if you try to set the march on Washington uh, in the context of the rest of the city, um, it was almost like an alien invasion because you had all of these people coming in focused on a massive national demonstration, but it was uh, parallel to and in some ways disconnected from the ongoing struggle in D.C. where people were suffering and didn't find that kind of support that was represented by all of the legions of sympathizers who came in for that August march. The day before, uh, we were, I mean, we weren't uh, overly enthusiastic, but we were excited at the prospects of this big event coming along, and and uh, so much so that we decided that we, in order to get a good seat for the protest, we went early, went the night before, and we slept that night on the stage, on the, mall, on, the on the grounds of the mall. Um, in the shadow of the Washington Monument, only to awaken in the early morning as people were beginning to arrive in buses. And as we woke up, we saw all these people getting there, and we sort of fell in line with all of these people. And as they were marching, throngs of people on the street, black and white, young and old, many signs, many of them printed by the unions that had been involved and had key involvement in organizing the march, with the theme being the uh, uh, march uh, for jobs and freedom. The original thought behind the march on Washington was uh, as much economic as it was uh, dealing with racial justice issues. In some ways it had the air of a, of a big celebration more than the air of a major protest. And it didn't carry the same degree of, of anger, the tone of anger and impatience uh, that uh, we younger people were imbued with because of our own experience and what we'd gone through that summer. When it was all said and done, uh, on a community level, we were still at the same point that we were the day before. I never got the, was convinced that that message from the march had gotten through. When you had these four kids, little girls that were killed in that church in Birmingham, the bombing that happened that very same summer, not very long after the great speeches at the march, you had, we already had had the assassination of uh, Medgar Evers, uh, prior to the march, people were still fighting to get uh, voting in, in um, uh, Mississippi. Uh, you had James Murder shot in the back. I didn't see the indelible imprint of, uh, of uh, any great change that came from the march. The march on Washington was good theater, dramatic, uh, well-meaning, important. Uh, certainly media, uh, massive media coverage. But I don't think it sank in with the country in terms of the need for change. Uh, I think you miss the nature of a movement if you think that, that there's a singular event that you can plan and that after that event comes off successfully that you're going to see change. It doesn't happen that way. When Dr. King went to Montgomery, it was Rosa Parks who had ignited that, that battle there. When he picked up the Meredith March, it was James Meredith who had ignited that battle. It was the sanitation workers here. Uh, horrifying examples of repression and death, uh, the water hoses in uh, Birmingham, those were the pivotal moments. What makes history? Is it a great man or is it a great event? And uh, I think it's a great event, the culmination of people's dissatisfaction, and then a great man comes along and leads the movement, but doesn't create it. He was part of the change.